All right, so I hadn't planned to go live tonight, so this is going to be kind of like a uh, kind of a mini film club video and uh, movie club video. I'm not sure uh, who is actually going <laughs> to see this one here tonight, but what I wanted to do was I wanted to do kind of like a, uh, I know some people didn't get to uh, come in uh, last night. I know that uh, Savannah didn't because of weather, and she's not coming in tonight because uh, she's uh, she's working right now. So uh, when you see the Savannah, hi, and uh, we'll be making a, uh, a video coming up and uh, probably my next live video unless uh, unless something else happens will probably be around Friday because it's gonna be a busy busy uh, week here anyway guys uh, what I'm doing tonight is I'm doing like a, a classic horror movie list basically some of the cool classic horror movie sets and I gonna I'm gonna do some uh, basically show you some stuff that I've uh, picked up over the last uh, well, pretty much over the last couple of months or so. One of them, basically, I had lost for a long time. Uh, and uh, actually, I got it just when I moved in. So I found it today. We were uh, kind of like getting the uh, the house ready. And we put together like a, uh, a cabinet. How classic. We're talking about like Universal and that type of stuff. So pretty classic. Uh, so I'm just going to get into a little bit of stuff tonight. Uh, not, you know, not everything, not a lot of it, but first I'll show you guys 30s and 40s. Yep, we're talking the classics tonight. <laughs> uh, we'll get some, like, maybe some, we'll go into the 50s a little bit, but, uh, most of we're going to go to the classic, classic stuff. So what I'm going to do first, though, is I'm going to show you some, uh, stuff that I picked up, and, uh, one that I picked up a while back, and I just had lost, but, uh, when we put together the other just guest glass display cabinet that we got from Ikea, that I, uh, is on my Instagram. So if you guys are on my Instagram term 007 uh, then you'll uh, you can see some of the stuff that I uh, picked up so some of the stuff here is gonna be uh, not new to you guys so the first one is one that my uh, my better half collects animation and the pot of Freeling is uh, one of her uh, her favorites so this came out this week and of course she uh, had to have that uh, we, yes we're gonna get to the uh, to the horror in a minute but uh, the Pink Panther this is the Kino edition this is volume 2 she has volume one. She also has all the MGM like ones that came out in, in single editions, except for the ones that you know the the Inspector Clouseau and the Aardvark, and the Advert, because basically uh, she's got all those on Blu-ray as well from uh, Kino. So we just got to pick up the rest of these and the dog f cartoons. Oh yeah, the cartoon series. Basically, the this one is like from nineteen forty, well, no, nineteen sixty six sixty eight. Uh. I do have the movies, but only on DVD. Uh, I've got like a, a puffy uh, pack, which uh, I got to get upgraded because I know Ship Factory put out a new edition of them. There are, there's always that one that's uh, missing from it, you know, one where Herbert Lom's the villain. And uh, I guess that was done by a different company, but I really, really like that one. It's actually my favorite. I got a uh, one steel book, and I finally can show you guys this because basically, I bought this a long time ago. Actually, when I first moved into this place misplaced it and only found it today so uh that is bill and ted's excellent adventure it's actually my first shout factory steelbook um just a fun silly movie i like it i actually like the second one better bill and ted's bogus journey but uh with the new one coming out i thought i'd uh, you know i picked this up uh it's supposed to have a really good documentary on there so uh for that i will definitely grab it and i grabbed two 4k discs uh recently and the first one haven't watched it yet, but it's Pacific Rim Uprising. I'm a really big fan of the original Pacific Rim film, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if this one kind of like lives up to the uh, to the original. I know it's a different director. I know Del Toro did the uh, first one, but uh, still, I like the universe and I like the way that it's done. Now, one that I did watch and I actually really did like. I was actually surprised at how much I did like it, and that's this one here, uh, Tomb Raider. Yeah, this was way better than the Angelina Jolie Tomb Raiders, and it was seriously close to uh, to the video game. If you were a, if you're a fan of video games and like you know, you know, and just out and action movies, that's uh, Tomb Raider is actually a really fun one, and the girl is the perfect choice for the uh, for the role Laura Croft, the new Laura Croft. Now, there's one more thing before I get into the classic horror stuff, and this one is kind of cool. This is actually not a uh, movie, but it is movie related, and it's a NECA figure, one that I wanted for a while. So uh, 
my better half got it for me for uh, for Father's Day, and this is the first time I was able to actually show it on here. And that is the Jason Lives Friday the 13th NECA figure. And, uh... I shall open it up. Oh, not all. You guys can see the inside of it. So this is what the figure will look like. But here you go. This is Jason there. You can see his... Uh, it looks like VHS big box. It does. That's what I kind of what I like about it. Uh, there's the uh, the sculpt for the uh, Jason face for part six. You can see that they gave him the. Uh, you can get the tombstone. He's got the knife and the machete. The uh, he's got that's part of the fence that actually was revived Jason and the of course the infamous uh, red hockey mask. So I'm very excited to have this. I this is like my. Uh, I've got Jason from part two, Jason from well, which uh, from part three. Uh, oh, Neca does a great job. Oh, w welcome, Mikey. Uh, uh, I got the uh, NES video game version of uh, Jason. When you open that one, no, but it actually plays music. I like click figures with actual movies already take too much space. I know. See, I don't get figures a lot, but uh, I got a, I've got a few of the Jason ones, and she knows I'm a huge Friday the Thirteenth fan. So she'll uh, she'll let me pick up something like this, and the sculpts on these are uh, are incredible. They're right up there with the uh, McFarlane ties. So uh, had to grab that. I do need like part four. I uh, really want part four. So I, it's just a mini uh, list here of like some uh, of some of some horror stuff, some classic horror stuff. So you guys can actually chime in on uh, some stuff that you think I uh, that I missed on this list. But here's a few classic horror. Like sets and uh, movies that I uh, that I really enjoy, that I think you know, kind of really should be in everybody's collection, uh, especially if you're like the older horror stuff. So first off, I'm going to start with with a simple one, and that's the uh, one of the TCM's uh, Turner, you know, greatest classic films collections. And this is one is is pretty cheap and easy to find, and that is the uh, the four pack here. It's got the uh, Spencer Tracy, Doctor Jekyll, and Mr Hyde. Uh, of course, Todd Browning's Freaks is on here. Again, a fantastic film. The Haunting, which is a movie I love, and the classic House of Wax. Now, although I don't have it here with me right now, I do have the uh, 3D Blu-ray of House of Wax as well. And uh, that uh, is something that if you've got a 3D TV, I do recommend you uh, pick that up. It's uh, actually really cool. So let's get into some of the, uh, the classic stuff now, and let's just see what you, uh, what you guys think. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's it's super cheap. Hey guy, for hey guy, how's it going? Real enough, I watched a few from that set today. Great minds. <clears throat> now, Fox put some awesome stuff and called basically in a. Do I have a three D TV to play it on? Yes, I do. I have a. Uh, although my living room now has a has a four K TV, uh, my uh, bedroom is a uh, has a three D TV. So both are just you know like around fifty five inches. So that's like uh, in the bedroom and fifty five inches in in the uh, in the living room because it's kind of like the right size for our for our living room we did want to go for 65 but uh we might down the road for uh 4k but for now it's you know it's good <clears throat> the, the way it is and we have like a uh, the crt right here and a crt in one of the rooms kids rooms upstairs as well uh so we uh, we got a few tvs This is a neat set, lo neat little set here, and I do like these films. And this is the uh, the Fox Horror Classic Collection. We got the Lodger on this one here. Uh, I we like that the Undying Monster. I think I think Kino actually has has put this one out again. House of Wax is your favorite Vincent Price movie, film? It's an amazing film. I really like House of Wax. I like the original too with Lon Latwell. Uh, you can actually get that if you get the uh, the Blu-ray. It actually has the original like uh, House of Wax with Atwell as well on it, and both are like really really good. I find, and of course we have the uh, Hangover Square. But uh, for me, I like the Lodger. But I think Undying Monster may be my uh, maybe my favorite on this one. I like the uh, the cheesiness. Now the second one was a little different, but you know we got like Chandu the Magician, which I don't really think is horror. Uh, Dragonwick, kind of maybe, uh, and uh, oh yeah, there's an original. Uh, the Lionel Atwell actually does the original. If you get the uh, the two disc edition or the flip uh, the flipper disc of it, but I think it's a two disc edition, I think, of uh, of it, or you get the Blu-ray or of the uh, Vincent Price House of Wax as a bonus feature of the Lionel Atwell movie Terror of the House of Wax that's on it, uh, so you can find out where it came from. And the best one on here for me is Doctor Renault's Secret. 
definitely the uh, the one to go with. And uh, what's really cool, I, I want to see if this is one of the ones that they do it on, but they usually do. It's not, oh, uh, shoot. And some of these here, they have like, uh, nope, not in this one. Oh, maybe they will. No, so, and some of these here, they have like these, uh, Chengdu and Dragon are probably in there because Vincent Price and Belgose. That is completely why they're in there. Uh, but they're not, you know, it's not that Dragon Wick is a bad movie either, but I just, uh, didn't think it's really horror. Uh, but, uh, it's, it's still, it's fun. Now, these are some cheesy favorites of mine, so, uh, these are Inner Sanctum Mysteries with, uh, Lon Chaney Jr. And I did have a lot of fun with these. Uh, I love the Inner Sanctum, like the, uh, radio series that comes on. I've seen the movie Silent Rage. It's awesome, actually, I like that. So, so Chandu technically isn't horror other than Bella Ghost is an evil bad guy. That is, that's true. Uh, Silent Rage is kind of like Chuck Norris meets Michael Myers. So, so that's really pretty much what they went in for with it. it it's a fun little film. It's tonally, it's, it's balanced, like isn't, isn't tonally really great. But uh, it's cheesy and it's fun. It's one of those I used to watch when I was a kid. Uh, I need to get that uh, three pack that they put out or put it a six pack, something like that with the uh, Silent Rage on it. Um, that's, uh, that's one of the things on my wish list actually. But if you haven't seen these Inner Sanctum ones, they are really fun, and they're, and they're just, you know, they're pretty short, but an hour long. Uh, usually these, these films are. They're kind of like uh, the BB pictures, ones that will play usually on the, uh, on the, on the B-reel. But uh, they're just fun little films, and nowadays they'd be, like, probably relegated to TV, but uh, it's pretty cool stuff. Next up is a from, one from the TCM archives, and although it's not horror exclusive, it has a... Uh, a uh, recreation of a lost horror film and uh, even that movie isn't really horror per se but the uh, the character pretty much is and this is the uh, Lon Chaney set and as you know it has the recreation of the famous I've never seen the Inner Sanctum movies but heard some of the radio dramas uh, the, I like the I like the Inner Sanctum ones actually London After Midnight now this character here haunted my dreams for so long uh, once you find out who the character is and what's really going on, it's actually uh, not as uh, as scary as you uh, as you think, but uh, it's a very scary visage. And when I was very young, I uh, remember seeing the uh, the Basil Gogos cover on uh, on Famous Monsters of Filmland, uh, the one with uh, with Lon Chaney with the London After Midnight, uh, and I was petrified. Mark the Vampire's remake. Yeah, it is. Unfortunately, they don't have the makeup. So, uh, you'd have to have that makeup for me, because uh, <clears throat> that scared the hell out of me. Now, obviously, the movie's lost, so what they did was they recreated it with, like, stills and, and like, uh, music. Yeah, they actually did a really good job with the recreation on the, uh, on the TCM set. TCM archives are actually, uh, you can't go wrong with them, uh, to be totally honest with you. They put out some really good quality sets, and uh, I love their stuff. Now, next up is one that I really like. It's one that I picked up when I first got out to uh, St. John's when I first moved there. And uh, because my uh, No Makeup in the Taki remake, it is, it's cool. But uh, I still need the makeup. Uh, it's, but it is cool. My better half won't watch the new horror films, but she will watch the old Universal stuff. Did you see the Universal is releasing the complete? Oh, yes, I did. It's like 140 right now on, uh, on Amazon CA, which actually isn't too bad. Uh, but uh, I want to go down a little bit more. I wonder, I haven't, I want to hear more about it. I want to find out if the actually, I know that uh, those Universal mo Monster films already have a ton of features. But if you're going to put it out, a big Blu-ray set like that, uh, that's like, put a little, just, just a little bit more smidgen features on there. I wouldn't mind that. And this one here, Universal Horror, is one that we sat down and we watched. Actually, me and uh, my oldest and... And my better half sat down and we, and we watched this. And it was really a cool time. Uh, the Black Cat is a really fun film. Man Made Monster, Horror Autumn, we really enjoyed. Actually, we enjoyed all of these films. And even if you don't have this one, uh, when I picked it up, I think I picked it up for $9.99. Pre-Code... I've heard of the Pre-Code Tam. Which one? Oh. Which movie is that? Uh, Pre-Code Time? Or, pre, or, or you mean Tam's in like a movie Tam? I'm a huge Pre-Code fan. Uh... TCM, oh yeah, actually I got a couple of them. I'll, uh, sh I, they're uh, Forbidden Hollywood sets. I love those sets. Uh, one of my favorite movies of all time is actually Three on a Match. And that's, 
I love that movie from when I was like, when I was young, I used to watch it over and over again, it used to come on CBC uh, late night all the time, and it was one of the early movies for uh, Humphrey Bogart playing like a bad guy, playing like a gangster, and it just, it just stuck with me. Hey, you're here after all, Savannah. Uh, I'm actually surprised to, to see you here tonight, and I'm glad to see you here tonight. Uh, hopefully, you're, the weather is better down, not down under there right now. Uh, I'm making a shorter video because, actually because I didn't expect you to be on here. So I said I'll make a shorter one so that she won't feel so bad if she missed out on it. Uh, so so you, haven't, you haven't started work yet. Well, welcome here as long as you can, as long as you can be here. Uh, we, you were missed yesterday. I'm doing classic horror, so a lot of the stuff you, you may not know. Uh, or you may know, I'm not sure. What depends on, you're younger, do you like the classic horror stuff? Do you like, like the older stuff? That old gods like me watch. Uh, <laughs> cool night here in Northern California. It's kind of a, it's been a drizzly night here. Uh, you've been missed. Trust me. Karloff and Lugosi said, uh, not the best. Uh, Frankenstein 1970s in it. Uh, that's one that I remember watching on VHS like early on. Uh, I did like that. Uh, Walking Dead's okay. But I really bought this one for like just to have Karloff and Lugosi to have all their sets. And uh, what I just got. What did you get in the mail? Is it like, uh, is it cool? Is it like something horror related or, or something kind of like different? About 10 minutes ago. You're building the suspense about it. You haven't seen Frank's 1970? It's, it's okay. It's not the best. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, but it just has a special place in my heart because uh, I saw it. It was an early VHS that I saw. Um, but I, uh, you know, I enjoy it for this. Savannah's supposed to be telling us what she got in the mail. Before I show my next one. <laughs> the Human Centipede Steelbook. All three movies. Are you a Human Centipede fan? Uh, with the extra disc. See, I saw the first, and I was like, okay, once is good for you, <laughs> Centipede, for me. Then the second came out. So parts of the curse of Frankenstein years ago during a Frankenstein. I oh, love curse. Third human centipede. I don't think I've seen it yet. Oh, I can't remember it. But uh, you met the guy from part two. He seems like he'd be a really cool guy in real life. Uh, he's a very odd looking dude. But uh, I've seen him in a lot of stuff. Hey, Polly, welcome back, dude. Okay, and it may, it's nice that human centipede is definitely not my cup of tea. <laughs> Uh, it, we all got different stuff. He is, he's got to, hey, Ben's Film for, Reviews, welcome back. And uh, this was an impromptu one, really. I actually, I um, spoke with uh, Savan earlier, on, uh, and I said, you know, I'm probably going to make something. And she said, well, I've got to go to work, so I'm probably not going to see it. But she, uh, she showed up before work, so uh, the gang's all getting here. So that's really cool. I actually didn't know if anybody was going to show up tonight. Icons of Horror Collection, Boris Karloff. I am a big, big fan of this one. The Black Room, uh, The Man They Could Not Hang, Before I Hang. There's a, there's a theme there. And The Boogeyman Will Get You. Hey, James, welcome back, dude. Did the notification bell work this time? Huge fan of these. Uh, and I love the way they're done. Hey, Andrew Bellina. <clears throat> Michael Myers is here. <laughs> I'm so I I get like digitally the Room Org magazine uh, because my uh, my cousin gave me like a, an Apple card for uh, for uh, for Christmas, and uh, so every year he gives me an Apple card, and every year I, I get the digital Room Org magazine. Now, the latest Room Org dropped with pictures from the new Halloween film in it, and by the way, guys, this is going to be brutal. Uh, it's got practical effects and the pictures that I saw were brutal. This is the most violent but makes sense Michael Myers that you're that you're going to see. Uh, I am actually going to go out and buy the actual paper copy of this room org because it is so good. Oh it's really awesome and if you can <clears throat> if you don't want it spoiled for you don't look at the pictures but there's one picture where the guy's jaws are ripped right <clears throat> his face is really elongated Brutal, man. <clears throat> okay, two hours after you stopped your life. Did you really? Facebook, oh, YouTube. <laughs> They're still ironing at the kinks after all these years. 
But yeah, definitely, guys, this Boris Karloff one's good. But the Boris Karloff set to get, the one to have, is this one right here, the Boris Karloff collection. A uh, really, really good one. We got Night Key here. Oh, yeah, pra practical effects. They are really used the practical effects in this one, and it's really well done. And movies haven't been on Blu or Blu Yeah, I know. There's a lot of movies that haven't made the Blu There's a lot of movies that even got haven't got through VHS yet. And some movies, um, or, uh, or versions of them, actually haven't made it past Laserdisc, like Scream, for instance. I've, we're, I'm still waiting for the uncut version of Scream to come out. I always get my live notifications as they start. Nice. <clears throat> Reality is an illusion. Welcome. Uh, we missed you last night, and uh, I noticed that, uh, that you actually made it for this one. Yeah, this is, you checked out the public library. This is a really good one, actually. Show me arrow covers vid. Yeah, oh, guys, if you haven't, Andrew Bellina's huge, like, movie guy like me, and basically he's doing his arrow video, like his top arrow video covers is coming out tomorrow. He just said right there, so definitely check that out. I will be checking that out, Andrew. I actually can't wait for that. <clears throat> I got a, I was going to do, like, a big, like, uh, list video you open your silver okay uh let us know how cool it is <clears throat> bella lugosi <clears throat> which screen factor put out a set of karloff movies like they with vincent price that would be awesome I, I would really like to see that happen is universal are they kind of are probably pretty tight with the uh with the, with the, with the rights to something like that but uh it's something that i would definitely like to see uh, I like to see Lugosi stuff too. Lugosi gets is underrated, I think, and there's some great stuff on here. Now, one of my favorites is The Black Cat. I really do like that movie. There's a couple mo different movies called The Black Cat, but uh, this is one of my favorite like Lugosi films. The Universal Monsters Blu-ray set. Is that the big one that came out, or do you have the one that I'm going to show you in a minute? Uh, there's a big one coming out. That's all the all of them on Blu-ray. Uh, not yet, I don't think. Uh, that uh, like it's about thirty or so on there. But yeah, the Black Cat is one of my favorites. It's got Invisible Ray, The Raven is on here, Murders in the Room Morgue, uh, Black Friday. It, it's a great set, actually. Uh, I really love it. And uh, getting into some of my Universal stuff, the DVD and Blu-ray for Attack Killer Tomatoes is a different cut than the VHS. Ooh, that's the MVD Rewind one, right? Uh, I gotta get that. I'm a really big MV I'm a really big fan of Attack of of the Killer Tomatoes franchise. Actually, I have the Return the Killer Tomatoes from Arrow Video. Uh, it, it was really cool, and early George Clooney film, by the way, guys. Top three favorite Dracula movies. Oh, dude, uh, Scars of Dracula from uh, Hammer. Uh, Dracula 1979, because that's the one that I saw in theater first. I grew up with it. And, uh, oh, had the Universal ones. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw you a curveball, and I'm going to say Sons of, Son of Dracula, because, uh, you know why? I, it, was, it was ahead of its time. Dracula 2012 logo. But who doesn't like that Argento Dracula with the where he turns into a praying mantis and like is really really green. Uh, of course, I got some of these sets, the legacy sets, the uh, the Invisible Man, cool one here. It's all down every Clooney after Cures of Mantos. I don't know. It, it's like you know, he disappeared. Argento's Dracula. Have you seen that, Tim? Have you seen Argento's Dracula? Even Azia seems to be checked out during that film. I mean, like, she really doesn't look, look like she wants to be there. She's not. Vanessa Don was extremely cool. I loved that one. My mom was in the crowd smashing the tomatoes in the first movie. <laughs> Are you serious? That is awesome. Uh, I actually, my uh, my oldest had, like, a, oh, yeah, there's an agenda one. It's, like, 3D. Uh, it's not very good. Rutger Hauer is in it. He's got a, as Van Helsing. And uh, I think he's pretty drunk, unfortunately, through the uh, throughout the film. At least it seems that way. And uh, it's not Argento at his best. It may be Argento at his worst. It seems like he didn't really care about the film. He just cared about the 3D te technique. He, that, he was enamored with that. Like the director movies with Lon Chaney Jr., where his name is Count Alucard. That, yeah, that, I love that one. That's Son of Dracula. I watched Creepers last night. All right. I love that film. <clears throat> Just pick up the old Dark House. Oh, that's awesome. I, I need that one. Monster Squad, a great... T oh, 
Monster Squad's a fantastic film. I uh, have that one in DVD in my collection. I like a collector's edition, but I need a better one. Still waiting for a better DVD copy of Jess Franco's Dracula Prisoner of Frankenstein. Dracula Prisoner of Frankenstein? Which one's that? Uh, I, I, I had the DVD of Dracula. Uh, I was not a huge fan of Jess Franco's Dracula, to be totally honest with you. It's as if directors, once they get, they get old, they lose all the curiosity. Maybe. Uh, I think that... Do I have Dark Knight Scarecrow on Blu-ray DVD? I got it on DVD. I think. Uh, do I have Dark Knight Scarecrow? I think I do. Yeah. I love Scarecrow films. So uh, those, like, freak me out, and uh, they do, to be totally honest with you. Even the man who's pure at heart and says his prayers by night can become a wolf when the wolf bane blooms and the autumn moon is bright. Uh, the wolf man. Uh, love these here, basically, you know, Where for London. I actually like Where for London. I'm a huge, like, Charlie Chan fan. Oh, Dracula vs. Frankenstein. That's a, uh, oh yeah, that's a whole lot of pain, but it's a lot of fun too. Um, I read somewhere that actually there wasn't originally supposed to have Dracula Frankenstein in it. Gods and Monsters, I love the film, but I don't have it. Uh, I don't think I do anyway. This Brandon, uh, oh, what's his name? From The Mummy. Not the, not the Alliance, okay. The Alliance one is like, is a whole ton of pain. Uh, I, I don't know if I've seen the one that you, or if I did, I don't, I, I don't really remember it. I'll be honest with you. Uh, and not the Paul Nash one neither. Oh, I like Paul Nash. Hooked on Movie Club Stream. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you are, because me too, I'll be honest with you. I haven't got to do, like, I wanted to do, and you mentioned doing, like, a podcast video, kind of like a more regular video. And I'm like, okay, I've got these, these like, lists of videos that I want to do. And I keep coming back to the streams, because I really love, like, interacting with you guys. It's like a, kind of a fun little movie club that we got going on here, and everybody can talk. But yeah, Where for London was, was one that I actually really did like. Not a lot of people like it, but it's a favorite of mine. The Mummy. Uh, like the set, actually like the sequels better than the original. Actually, I didn't think I was going to do another stream uh, so soon, James. But uh, basically, a few people like missed out on the last one, and I... Uh, the last one was kind of was fairly it was fairly big fairly epic for me uh i did like a two and a half hour long one tonight i wanted to do kind of like a mini stream a little movie club thing maybe i needed you guys here tonight after such a long day i've uh, been like building james uh you're on my instagram so you saw you know the my uh the shelf and that i put together and all that stuff so yeah it's been a long day i need to unwind so this is a perfect place i played a little bit of like uh fortnite earlier too Frankenstein. This is probably the uh, one of the best of the Legacy collections that came out, and I uh, do love this one. I do have, oh, I got like, I didn't bring it over, but I got like the Blu-ray that uh, Walmart put out. Of, I saw the shelves, they look really, oh, thanks. Where I got the uh, the one shelf, like the bookshelf. I got that from uh, Walmart, and the, the glass display, the display cabinet, uh, that the uh, the new one, the, like the thin one, I got that one from Ikea, and uh, I love Ikea. It's really fun to put together. And of course, last but not least, is Bela Lugosi's Dracula. I know what you're thinking, I'm missing a set, right? And I am. It's one that's really, really hard to find for me around here. And uh, that's the uh, the Creature from the Black Lagoon one. I'm a huge Creature from the Black Lagoon fan. So uh, I will eventually get that. Let me bother you. <laughs> never seen those movies. You've never seen like the original Universal movies? Uh, some of them are really, are, they're really fun. Like, and they're not very long, Savannah. So basically, it's a, it's a nice, like, kind of like a primer for, uh, for the way horror would go. <clears throat> and even above, beyond that, uh, watch Hammer. Hammer Films did some amazing stuff in the, uh, in the, in the 60s and the and 70s. This is one of my favorite sets that I got. And I, and I do love these films. You set of all fifty movies. They put in the Blu-ray one, right? And uh, are you are you upgrading, James? Or are you staying with the fifty? Set? Like my uh, my cousin, has got the DVD set. He's good with that. He's uh, he's not going Blu-ray. Uh, he's got the DVD set. He's going to keep that, and that's good enough for him. So uh, I'm still thinking which way to go because uh, I don't have like the uh, the DVD set or the Blu-ray set. I got like some of the Legacy sets here. I got like uh, Frankenstein on uh, on Blu-ray. And uh, it's got like a, you know, the uh, glow-in-the-dark cover that the Walmart put out. And I got like one you're going to see in a minute. But one of my favorite sets of all time is this. 
It's the Val Luton Horror Collection. If you haven't seen the Val Luton films, uh, he produced them, he didn't direct them. Um, it's, they're really, really good. And the documentaries on, on, there's two documentaries on Val Luton here, and both of these are fantastic. Those whippersnappers <laughs> with their Blu-rays. Uh, Blu-rays! <clears throat> Get off my lawn! Uh, and the, uh, there are some great movies with some great atmosphere. Val Luton was definitely ahead of his time, and I think he preferred, and he was at his best when he stayed into the, uh, into the B-films. He just, uh, he just really did well with that, and especially when he was working with, uh, with Jacques Trenot. He got movies like Cat People and Curse the Cat People. Of course, Curse Cat People is coming out now on, um, on from Criterion, uh, right? Got my line, Clint Eastwood. Uh, Curse the Cat People was has been put out with uh, by Screen Factory, I think. Um, I Walk the Zombie, Body Snatchers, Green Torino. Uh, All of the Dead, Bedlam, Leopard Man. Leopard Man is one that stands out. There's a scene in, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's Leopard Man, and I've mentioned it before. Uh, yeah, B movies did give directors freedom, gave them the freedom to do and like to go outside of the uh, of the usual boundaries that the studios would actually kind of like tie them into. There's a scene where uh, this girl, she's outside, and you know the leopard is coming, and she's she's knocking on the door, and her mom's like, cook like in the basically she's in she's in the kitchen type thing. She's you know she kind of ignores her at first, and blood comes under the the door. It's a uh, it's it's a brutal scene, and you don't see anything really. It's it's but it's very effective, really creepily effective. Now we're going into the fifties here, guys, and that is with the Fly collection. Do love this. Uh, I didn't bring up my Vincent Price stuff because I already showed that on my uh, on my Scream Factory and my Arrow video ones. Vincent C B movies you. Go to the driving or the grinders. Actually, this is a really cool one. I picked this up the same day that I picked up this one here, and this is the old Vincent Price collection, the old MGM one. And it's uh, you know got some cool movies on here. We got like Theater of Blood, Madhouse, a movie I love. I got to get the Blu-ray of that one. Uh, I really got upgrade, upgraded Madhouse. The Doctor Five films are on here: Tales of Terror, Twice Told Tales, and uh, Witchfinder General, and uh, an extra disc. But the one I guess that most people got, the one that most people uh, will know is this one. This is the UK edition of the Universal Monster set. It's a, a really, really good set. And this one I will open up. Because there's a difference between the US edition and the UK edition. And you're going to see, if you've got the US edition, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll notice right away what it is. Wish Upon. Uh, I've heard stuff about Wish Upon, Savannah. Not great stuff about Wish Upon. Say so you would be interested. To, oh, wow. The coffin, the, yeah, the coffin was there for like the, the first part of it. So, Andrew's going to know this. The uh, last man, it was, it was okay. I liked it for what it was. Uh, it's got like great, like great little booklet. It's got some amazing like art cards for all the different films. Bride is one of my favorite films. Like period, Bride is just one of my favorite films. I also liked Bride, The Bride with a... Uh, <sighs> I'm sure they can find a way to work around that. Maybe Jeff Goldblum can play kind of his, his own his own brother, his twin, maybe regenerated, or maybe he's the fly. Oh, uh, yeah. I know you were like here for a few seconds, Vaughn, and you're like gone. I was like, are you, is she, she's really quiet if she's here. She's not usually that quiet. That's how I knew you weren't here. Yeah. And Genetic manipulation. So what's really cool What's really different about this one set, aside, which is different from the other ones, is that these have like picture discs on them. Now, the, if you got the U.S. release of this, they don't. It's actually just uh, just the words. Uh, there's no like actual picture discs on them. But if you buy them in the in the set, 
Uh, same with the new Doctor Who set, by the way, guys. If you're Doctor Who fans, I'm not sure if any of you guys are Whovians. You definitely don't talk too much. You make it interesting. Uh, the uh, Thanks. Actually, I'm a huge fan of this. I'm a huge Universal fan, James. Uh, so, and I actually didn't know I was getting this. It was kind of a surprise. Why would they make that change? I, that I don't. That I cannot tell you. But uh, this, they did the same thing with the recent Doctor Who set that came out. Uh, they finally put out the original, like the first season of Tom Baker's Doctor. I think it's like uh, series twelve, right? So, in the uh, in the UK edition, it's a big, like kind of like uh, kind of digi pack book, like uh, with uh, like postcards and like it's got like pictures on each of the discs. And uh, in the U.S. release, U.S. North American release, it's a thin like Blu-ray pack. And it's just got like uh, just the same picture on every disc. If they make oh we're we're on the fly make another fly movie would they do a Halloween and ignore the eighty nine sequel? The Fly Two, the Fly Two. You know what's one really good thing about the Fly Two? The best freaking documentary on the Fly is uh, on the Fly franchise is on the Fly Two. Ah, seen the new cover for Carrie. Uh, that is both movies and oh. no, I haven't actually. I can check that out. Uh, yeah, the, the Fly Two is fun. It's uh, it's a comic book movie. It's a very much a comic book movie. It's not a horror film so much as it is like a, it, it's very comic book. Charles Band could have made the Fly Two because Charles Band's a huge comic fan. And when you watch a Full Moon movie, you feel like you're uh, a lot of times when you're watching a good Full Moon movie, it's it's coming off like this came right off the page of a comic book, uh, of an early comic, book, a cheesy comic book. And uh, the Fly Two is kind of like that. It's kind of like uh, one of those like '70s or '80s like stories that you'd see in like a House of Mystery or something like that. Oh, Carlos, again, uh, thank you for coming in, and uh, I will see you next time when I actually do do a bigger one. Um, you know, check the Fly comic sequel a few years back. I didn't actually. I got to see that. Uh, what's the documentary called for Fly Two? Uh, the I'm not sure, but the uh, if you buy the special edition of the Fly Two, and it's a Actually, uh, only cheap. I think it's only like when I bought it. I think it was bought it at a uh, at store for like five bucks. And it's like a two disc edition. But that documentary actually isn't just about the Fly Two. It's a documentary on all the Fly films from the uh, original Fly right up to uh, Jeff Goldblum's Fly and the Fly Two. Well, f for me, guys, it is three ten. I'm actually going to bed fairly soon. This is going to be like a uh, a quicker. Uh, movie library one basically just uh just to get the get the movie club together and uh and talk and do like a short video on uh california i gotta visit there sometime not in the uh in a few years uh, i'll love to get there um i want to go to new york too i actually really i got i got friends in new york now can I stay up till 4 a.m. Nova Scotia time? I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> because right now, I because uh, tomorrow is a work day. Uh, no, I don't work till later on, but I promise my better half I get up with her because she does work early in the day. Uh, that's one of the, the the harder things, basically, is that uh, I got, like, mostly night hours. And I, I work a lot of nights. And uh, she works, like, 9 to 5. Well, you estate are, am I closest to? Uh, I don't, let's see, I'm in Nova Scotia. Uh, when I was in Canada, uh, when I was in Canada, when I was in like Ontario, I know it used to be, be Maine, right? Um, yeah, probably Maine. Uh, because that's where I, we'd, we'd end up going, is we'd, uh, we'd go over to Maine, we'd drive over. It was a lot laxer then, you could actually probably, you know, we would, there was no huge like border stoppage when it came to like uh to going over to the states back then uh, we'd like to we just drive over and uh you know for the day type of thing especially when i was in ontario we did that a lot then i'd love to uh to do it again i love to get over to uh us during like a criterion sale time i love to do that uh put on like logan toxic criterion sale song will i will i go into uh barnes and noble uh, <laughs> stephen king country that is so true. When my uh, when my aunt originally went down to uh, to Maine, I'm a 
a writer. That was what I was. Everybody expected me to do by trade, and I didn't. Like uh, I, I did a bit of writing, but I didn't follow up. I didn't become like like a, uh, a novelist, like uh, like a lot of my family thought I was going to do. And uh, they got me like a picture of a. Uh, do I own the movie Cuj Cujo? I love the movie Cujo. Do I own it? Oh, I don't know if I got the blur. I know I need a U.S. postal box, uh, but I'm not close enough to uh, to get one. That's the that's the killer part. Like when it comes to uh, to stuff like that, I gotta find if I got anybody that's close by, uh, you know, that's closer to the uh, to the United States than uh, that that I can do a postal box with. Like somebody uh, like if if I had like family that was like really close, and they could just come over. Oh. D. Wallace is amazing. I love D. Wallace. Uh, I gotta get the new Howling Steel book because there's a new interview on it. Oh man! But I only got it on DVD, so I can actually justify that. Uh, I wish I had a U.S. postal box. Uh, what really drives me up the wall, though, is every time like you're dying to get my movie. I'm dying for you. Oh, I'm actually really curious to see what that is. Uh, don't tell me though. I want to find out here. I said King Street. It's King Street without the S, but it'll it'll still get her because we got the postal code. Uh, Howling is one of my favorite like uh, werewolf movies. It uh, it truly is. I, I love the makeup in the Howling, and I know it's super cheesy. I like the uh, the film, but I like the way that's done. I like the nods to to different uh, directors, and I love seeing Roger Corman. Okay, let's see. Cujo carry Pet Cemetery Salem's Lot from one to four. Uh, for me, oh, man. Carrie as well I guess one uh, Salem's Lot is two uh, Pet Cemetery and Cujo are tied we'll go with that uh, <clears throat> but my favorite my favorite Stephen King uh, I should do like a a day on Stephen King American Ware for the Howling, Howling oh, both are classics when does Howling Stubble come out uh, next month I think in, I think it comes out in July I, uh, I could be wrong on that one, but I think it comes out in July. Uh, it looks like a really good steelbook, by the way. So, uh, you know, I don't go and grab every steelbook because I'm not like a, I'm not a huge like steelbook guy. I like reversible covers more. Uh, that's kind of like, if I get the choice, like if there's an Arrow one coming out, and I get the choice between like uh, spending like a couple dollars less and getting the reversible cover and all the same stuff. Spontaneous Combustion. Was that the first Tobe Hooper movie you saw? Uh, yeah, I actually do. did like the film. Uh, wasn't that put out by some company on oh, that I don't uh, that I can't get to uh, like Code Red? Did Code Red put that one out? Uh, Tobe Hooper, unfortunately, later on would make a lot of like not so good movies. Like uh, anybody remember Crocodile? Yeah. So uh, American Werewolf is a bloody scary. Oh, well, I can do the slot. Stop getting the steel books. They were getting. Uh, the Howling one. I've got to get the Howling one. Uh, so uh, that's one that I that I do have to get. It's got. There's so much coming out. A uh, Stephen King video would be great. The Master of Horror. Code Red put it. It would. It's on Amazon Prime. I uh, I got to check it out. Now, I spent a long time since I've seen Spontaneous Combustion. A long time. Uh, when it first came out it was probably when I saw it, and it's probably the last time I saw it. Uh, there's a lot of films like that that uh, that I have only seen like one choice. Does the Fog have anything new on it though? Because uh, I've got the Fog Blu-ray, the original one. Uh, cool Steel is coming out this week. Uh, you guys get some cool stuff over there, over in Australia, over in the UK. You guys, you, you guys, I, it's like I see you guys as, as the same. I don't know, like as neighbors, so even though it's, it's, there's differences. But uh, you guys have like uh, you get all kinds of cool stuff. But uh, yeah, so the Howling's one I got it. The Fog is there anything new on that? You'll be spending money on them. Can't wait to see what they are, by the way. Sunset Entertainment is releasing some spontaneous combustion. Who is Sunset Entertainment? Uh, is that a company I'm unaware of? Well, obviously it is. Hey, Sophie, hi there. They're still near making videos. A lot of movie collecting people stop doing videos. You seem to have stayed out of the drama. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of I want to stay away from the drama side of that stuff. What I can say, when did I say the classic era movie ended? Uh, you mean like the golden era of like a... Uh, it was just too scary to be cheesy. Uh, there's a bit of cheese to it. Uh, Patrick McNee. Uh, but uh, the, when did it end? Oh, God. You want to say the, uh, at the end of the Universal era, but then you've got the Hammer stuff. And for me, that is still like the classic era. 
the classic era shifts, I think, uh, but I would say pretty much at the end of the Hammer Amicus thing, for if like you want to go into like the the color classic era, but the actual classic classic era was probably like uh, when the around the time that the when the Hammer and Universal stuff ended. Did the guy who did Chanel Don, Channel Dawnstar die? I don't think. Oh God, I hope not. Uh, I, I, I just think he doesn't make as much anymore. Uh, I think he's still around. Blu-ray unboxings, out and about, and updates are fewer in 2018 than they are a few years ago. That is that is kind of true. And even for my channel last year, that was the case. Uh, not not from any like super dramatic reasons other than the fact that I just didn't have like good internet. So it took me longer to make videos. Oh, uh, Oh, is it just live streaming tonight? Uh, oh, well, thank God for that. Uh, never went. I always I was in the live stream a few hours ago. Awesome. The classic year ended after Scream 3. <laughs> the Rings trilogy. Uh, <clears throat> do you like Scream 3? I'm iffy on Scream 3. It's the, my least favorite screen. Diabetes, uh, yeah, actually, well, the company, one well, the companies I work for, actually, uh, what they do is they do, like, diabetes, like, uh, testers, the, uh, like, the, uh, the One Touch and stuff like that. Now, they just put Jurassic Park movies on 4K, I'm so tempted. Yeah, it's your least favorite, me too. Uh, for me, the Scream movies, I'll list them for you, in the order that I like them, and that is one... Two, four, and three. Classic. Era. I love the '80s. Uh, I'm I'm a huge fan of like slasher films and stuff like that. You don't like the first Jurassic Park? Did you like the Jurassic World films? Um, see, I can't turn down a good slasher film. I can't turn down a bad slasher film. I I just love the slasher, and it all comes from like when I was really young. I was a a book geek. I read like crazy, and one of my favorite things to read were the old mysteries, the old Agatha Christie mysteries. Yeah, uh, you know those armchair, uh, you know, thrillers are basically Hercule Poirot and stuff like that. And I saw like the slashers and the kind of the mystery slasher, especially. Actually, no, I thought like Scream Four is really good. By the way, was kind of like a the slasher was an extension of that. Okay. Fong, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I, 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 I got to see it. They had it at the drive-in this week, and we almost went, but uh, we stayed. Uh, we stayed home. We watched uh, Tomb Raider instead, and uh, we'd really enjoy that. So, I'm. I hope they do a new, another Tomb Raider film. Bad review. Did they really? Uh, see, Scream Four. You know what makes Scream Four? Uh, there was some like bad acting in Scream Four. I'm not gonna lie. Your favorite nod to Edgar Allan Poe, claustrophobic. Premature <laughs> burial horror. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe, the uh, the AIP stuff, I guess, would be like. Uh, I haven't seen Heredity yet. I, I've got to. Oh, have a great time at work and uh, teach those little kitties well. <laughs> I need to become a better swimmer. See you later, Savannah, and have a great have a great day there. Uh, you're gonna enjoy your job much more today than I'm probably gonna enjoy doing mine, but uh, yeah, it's fun. I like my stuff. <clears throat> now, uh, the serpent in the rainbow, really? Oh, in like the claustrophobic way? Yeah, uh, I, I can definitely get that. Movie makes me feel really claustrophobic, actually. Uh, and the fact that it's true that it's actually, you know, based on actual, like, events that happened. Uh, that's even creepier. And it makes you kind of wonder about that stuff. The Blanchfield Monster. Oh, uh, that, I know that movie. I grew up, like, uh, reading a lot of the stuff. But the first book I ever read, like, like, actual book out of the library was uh, Tales of Mystery and Imagination by Edgar Allan Poe's Tales of Mystery and Imagination. <laughs> 
uh, that was the uh, the first thing I ever took out of the library. I had like this kind of cool illustrated cover, and I read like the, read it over and over again. Actually, I read it so much that when I brought my uh, my better half, when I brought him back to uh, to my my hometown, we went to the library, and she opened up the the book Tales of Mystery and Imagination, and they had like the card in there, and it uh, it had my name there like around five or six times so it was still there and uh, it's still in my name and I I kind of I kind of wanted to steal the card and like a piece of history type of thing and I really should have because the library closed down a lot of libraries closed down and so really sad that uh, we had we lost a lot of libraries here in uh, in Canada that uh, that never should have happened change the Spanish Italian flick I can picture it but I can't quite grasp it, and I know I should know it. It's one of those like when you hear the name, you know you should know it. What would you guys consider like the the classic the classic era for you? Everybody's is uh, I think is going to be a little bit different. Now, if you're, why do I know that name? And something else. My favorite exploitation movie? Ooh. Uh, I love road games. Uh, I'm a big Richard Franklin fan. Uh, I, love, uh, I love Turkey Shoot, well, otherwise known as Escape 2000. Uh, that's a really good one. Uh, Patrick is a bit slow moving, but I do like it. Uh, I like a lot of uh, uh, exploitation films. Ever see the early 80s TV movie, Don't Go to Sleep? That sounds really familiar, actually. Uh, Raven 2012 with such potential. Oh, yeah, I know. You hated slugs. Do you remember? Sl oh, yeah, actually, I got that. It's super cheesy, and uh, it's based on a book. Actually, I can I can watch it, and uh, there's it's just so over the top, especially you know that I actually. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, that name it was killing me. Uh, but uh, slugs is done by somebody that I that did some other stuff that I like. And uh, I, when I was in Ontario last, I actually picked up Slugs with a bunch of others. I, they put them out on like the uh, movie, like the Midnight Mad, Mad, like the movie Madness Marquee or something like that. It was just like a a, uh, a pretty, uh, just had the film, no extra features on it, any, any, any of that stuff. I picked up Slugs and I picked up uh, The Initiation, which is one that I wanted to watch. I wanted to get the Arrow edition of that one. I'm a huge fan of the initiation. That's a slasher film that I really like, by the way, if you haven't seen it. I, I do recommend it. It has uh, Daphne Zuniga in it, who would later go on to do a lot of the other stuff. It was boring to you? It's a thing with some, I think. It follows 2014. I like to see it follows, actually. Pick five movies that come out on Blu-ray. Actually, uh, I was thinking about it today, actually. There was a... And it's killing me right now because I was looking at some movies... Uh, I did up like a, uh, every once in a while, like I guess I, like everybody else, I'll go on Amazon, I'll do up like a, a wish list. And uh, I said, okay, I'm going to do up like a big wish list of stuff. And as I was doing it up, there are certain movies like, why isn't this movie on Blu-ray? Why isn't this movie on Blu-ray? So I got to write down all these movies and like actually do a video on like uh, some movies that I'd love to see come over on Blu-ray. Some that, come, that have been on Blu-ray, but I'd like to see get like special features. Uh, I get like a collector's edition type of thing. So there's a lot of films when it comes to that that I like to see come out. Um, and there's a lot of cheesy stuff like that, that aren't even really good films. I just want to see them to complete my collection. A bunch of Best Picture Oscars movies. Not on, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's not on Blu-ray, unfortunately. Uh, Jack Frost 2. Uh, as silly as the movie is, like uh, Mutant Snowman. You know, he's killing people and stuff like that. Uh, get crazy, got to do your problems with the soundtrack. That's what kills me in some movies, is the uh, is the soundtrack. Have another great video on Stephen King video. And I'm getting some good ideas tonight, uh, especially for a, like an impromptu video that uh, that I pretty much just thought of. Nine Seven Six Evil Two, uh, is that one? I'm, that one? Yeah, because the first one I got the first one. Deadly Friend with features. Rumor screaming. And, oh, that'd be nice. I'm I'm a fan of the film. I saw it in theater, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm that age. Follows favorite horror that do, doesn't know. It, it's a modern piece or a modern piece. There's uh there's a few like that actually, and the uh they kind of work when they when I find when they don't. 
Some won't be on Blu-ray because of rights and music issues. There's the thing. Uh, one of my favorite TV shows of all time, I'm from the 80s, guys, is uh, Miami Vice. I thought it was really good. Oh, Crunch, it did come out in Criterion. And they took the time, although there was crap all features when they put it, Miami Vice on, uh, on DVD, when they originally put it out. They took the time to clear every single piece of music for the Miami Vice. And you needed it. Like, you, need, you can't... You, you cannot watch Mammy Vice, the 80s series, without having to like all the music. Unholy Rollers had a DVD release, but it was musically edited. <sighs> Abyss is supposed to come out? Who's playing at Abyss? Is it like a, a company company? True Lies, yeah. The, and Abyss on Blue. Oh, True Lies. I'm a huge Jamie Lee Curtis fan. True Lies. Yes, uh, there. We want to add someone up to the crushes. You always. <laughs> Did you roll up your sleeves in the 80s? Did I roll up my sleeves? I did like the the tuck. I add the total 80s style. Miami Vice? Oh, you seriously? Yeah, I had the the shirt and the and I had like the the jackets. I had a powder blue one, and I had like a a, a salmon one or a pink one, you call it. Uh, and uh, I had the. I had the pants. I had the whole ladies get up. I was like very Don Johnson ish in my in my style of clothing uh, back then, and I was so yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, super uh, you know. And back in the early eighties, I had like these huge glasses, and I picked them on purpose because I was a huge fan of the Cars, the band the Cars, and Rick Ocasek was like uh, the lead singer of the Cars, and I was this like scrawny little kid, and Rick Ocasek was this scrawny dude that had Polina Porskova as his like as his girlfriend I'm like man if Rick Ocasek from the Cars who's not a good looking dude can get it but again I didn't have the musical talent that Rick Ocasek had anyway guys with that slightly embarrassing story thank you so much for showing up at the for the movie club tonight I cannot wait to talk to you guys again uh, do I think me too is oh that's a I don't usually get on to like political subjects Sophia uh I think that uh, Godfather of King Kong, I wouldn't consider King Kong a franchise, but uh, I don't know, actually. I, I like them both for different reasons. But the, the Me Too movement is, uh, a lot of it is, was, you know, there's a lot of stuff that was needed, definitely, to uh, stuff, the world changes. And uh, we got to try and change along with that, I guess. Uh, but... Godzilla. Godzilla or King Kong, I was going to say. Godfather King Kong? Uh, Godzilla. Uh, I'm a huge Godzilla fan. Seen the most beautiful island yet. Actually, no, I don't think I have. Uh, 60 millimeter? Do you know what I really love to see? Uh, uh, many put out like, it's, uh, not in my theaters, not say, but the 70 millimeter prints of like films. Like they did with the, what was it, the 2000, was it Shining, 2001, something like that. They did a Kubrick one recently. And uh, so much good stuff. But here I am, I have got, it is 3.30 and I have got to go because I've got to get up early tomorrow to get my uh, better half off to work. Then i got to get back to bed, sleep for a bit before I go to work because I'm working until like 1 or 2 o'clock tomorrow morning. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I am, uh, I've been uh, honored to be on here with you guys. Have a fantastic night uh, from Tim to James to Polly to Sophie, to everybody that came in and uh you guys are awesome. You rock. Have a fantastic night, and uh, I'll see you again next time. And we'll hopefully should be here next Saturday when we'll be talking about. I'll decide before then, and hopefully I'll uh, I'll do it. Ah, Ben, thank you. I'm, I didn't know if you left or not. I'm glad to see that you're still here. I'll think of a subject, and we'll uh, we'll run with it. And as always, there'll be twists and turns along the way. Have a great evening, guys.